Hello, I'm Paul Briley, and you're listening to Off the Comma. I'm a human who cares about supporting other humans. On this podcast, we'll explore all facets of what it means to feel stuck in life. We talk with people just like us who have found themselves sitting on a comma and not knowing where to go next. We'll unpack the experience with them, where they've been stuck, what it feels like, what they experienced, and what they learned. My goal is to inspire you by seeing yourself in others. I believe that when we feel more connected and seen, magic can happen. Sarah, I am so excited to have you here for a number of reasons. I say this every time so far, like I'm always excited to have my guests on the on, on the show, but you in particular, because you and I have a little bit of history and I'm going to ramble about that for just a second before I let you introduce yourself. Please do. Please so, do. Yeah. So we, we went through a coach training program together. I, I don't want to steal any of your story, but I'm going <laughs> to. And, and we ended up like, we've only known each other for what? It's been like two years now now yeah just roughly and yeah. we ended up being the first pairings in our coach training program <laughs> and so we were we were coaching with each other as brand newbies and 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 using all this new content that we'd just been handed and <laughs> and that's how we got to know each other through all the fits and starts of that particular experience but look at us now like you're badass I'm badass and here we are now on the other side of this in entirely different places than we were so true so yeah. true. It's like, a, uh, it feels like another lifetime that we were going through that. And it really right. wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to shut up now because I have a gift for Gab and I would like to introduce you and then have you introduce yourself. So I am here today with Sarah Serbic. She comes to us from Sacramento, California, here in the United States. Sarah, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Tell us, how would you like to be known? Well, like you said, my name is Sarah. I think the the best way I can describe myself is probably a go-getter. I'm a doer. I'm definitely a creative. And I would, I would say I'm a risk taker. I feel like I'm stealing that from our friend Meg Moore's uh, email signature. Because there's mm. always those risk taker. But I'm like... You know, I am too. So uh, more than one of us can be a risk taker. Yeah. Well, the the world is abundant, right? Like no one lays claim to anything in particular. And there there are many risk takers. And I, knowing you as I do, I would support that 100%. I would see you as a risk taker. So yeah, that was when you told me to like, you know, what are the words that describe me outside of my job? I was like, that was the first thing that came to mind. And I was like, did I come up with that? I don't think I did. And then I was like, oh, yeah, it's also on Meg's thing. But yeah, exactly. It's groupthink, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a believer in that along our path, the seeds are planted. And it's not that the seeds are unique and individual, right? Like one seed grows a plant, that plant puts seeds out to soil and they grow a plant and that puts seeds out to soil and so on and so on and so forth, right? I was doing meditation today and I was watching, uh, I was looking at a clip on YouTube and this person was doing a, a hand tracing technique. And I'm like, oh my God, he stole my thing. And yet, because I had posted it randomly on social media some months ago when I had kind of discovered it. Well, then I realized it's like, well, who's to say I made that up? Like, maybe that was something I'd seen from somewhere else and or does it really matter? Yeah. Like the the theory of like, is there original thought? You know, how will we ever know? And And with what history shows us that there have been, we guesstimate, 128 billion people on this planet since humanity began. So is there really anything new? Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. It's I don't think we'll I don't think anybody will ever. It's like the chicken and the egg. You know, you'll never know, <laughs> really know the answer to that question. Right. Well, let's get back to you, because today is all about your story. And I'm really excited to hear your story, particularly because you've been <laughs> we, we saw each other this weekend and you were dropping hints and and as I told you and, and all my other guests, like, no, I don't want to know. I don't I don't pre-screen. And then you were <laughs> you were working so hard to keep me keep me from knowing what your story was. So I appreciate that. And I'm <laughs> eager to get into that. I want to start with you, though, like I do with all of my guests and, and ask you, what is your intention for today? Or rather, what what intention would you like to have for this podcast? What is my intention? I think first and foremost, my intention is to spread some awareness to this venture that I'm dipping my toe in 
And I think my intention is really to make myself and others think about things on a more global scale. So like beyond myself and my business and my identity and like thinking about like a more global reach and like a selflessness on a global level. When you say selflessness, what what do you mean by that? Take take that a little bit deeper or or is that coming up in your in your story? I mean, it will come up, but I I would love to take that deeper. What I'm, what I really mean is thinking beyond, thinking beyond things that are self-serving. And that's like something I've been thinking about a lot is in, in business and use it, you know, using your business's platform, like what am I doing besides generating income for myself and thinking about issues and things that maybe don't even necessarily affect me. And maybe I'm not even able to see thinking on the scale of like, there's so many issues that we don't even know about. So I think that's what I mean by that is just like being open to a changing your mindset on things and changing habits and be being open to like, there is work to be done and there's help to be given in areas that we might not even know about. So what I'm hearing you say, Sarah, is thinking outside of yourself and seeing yourself in the things that are outside of yourself. Like maybe I'm interpreting my own kind of perspective into that, but what that sounds like to me is the world is bigger than you. It's important to step outside of you in order to see where else you might be needed. And that in doing so, like that is you. I think the other thing, like I kind of come back to sometimes like with a, with large scale issues, like, well, I'm just one person, like how much impact can I really create? I think like setting that aside, because like, I don't know how much impact I can create, but I know that I could create some, even if it is small. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's definitely been something that's on my mind lately. Well, thank you for sharing that. So that's that's your intention for today's episode. And my intention, as it always is, is that we're setting up a mirror and that hopefully someone else can see themselves in you and that that inspires them to feel empowered to to do something that's important to them and or at least that people see something in you that makes them feel less alone than they might have been feeling. I'm excited to get into it. So me too. As we talked about, you know, in in every episode, I have five key questions that I ask or five inquiries, and that'll frame our conversation. So I'll start with the first question here in a second. And from time to time, I might interrupt. I mean, let's just call it what it is, right? We call it intervening or interjecting or stepping in or what have you. But there might be times where I, I want to kind of step in on, on what you're saying for a second. And either it's to redirect or it's maybe to have you dig deeper, or maybe it feels like your your story is taking us back from a point that seemed like it was important earlier. So with your permission, and I joke Absolutely. with all my guests because I say with your permission, and we know goddamn well that I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> 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 so let's let's jump in. Sarah, tell me, where have you found yourself sitting on a comma in your life? So, uh, well, let me just preface this by saying many times. Um, but what I want to talk about today is present day. So I've recently just gotten married and came back from my honeymoon. And for anyone who's gone through like the hullabaloo that is a wedding and all of the things, it's like, it's kind of like, I didn't feel like it was all encompassing. But then I came back from our honeymoon. And I was like, Oh, I was spending a lot, like a lot of energy on that in the last year, year and a half. And it sort of left me with this feeling of like, okay, well, now what, you know, Mm -hmm. like, like, what do I do now? It's sort of a funny question because I do own a couple of businesses. So I have plenty of things to do with my time, I suppose. But you know how the world works. Like you have that thought and then like something happens and you're like, oh, so um, I'm having this thought in the last month or so. And I'm cruising Instagram one day and I see this Instagram reel And it's, it was like a a picture of one of those stores that has like tons and tons of clothes. And it said like, have you ever wondered what happens to all of the world's clothes? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking like, no, (laughs) I've never wondered that. And then it panned to this clip in the desert in Chile of mountains of clothes. 
just like dumped in the desert. And so then I was like, well, I've got to deep dive this. So I spent like all weekend. And so I, you know, go down the rabbit hole and it's, it's an issue in multiple places. And it's a large issue in Ghana of like, just like, there's no, there's no real way to like recycle clothes. There's these spaces in the world where all of our waste, our textile waste is ending up and it's causing like a ton of destruction. And I started feeling like, I started feeling really guilty because I am a big fashionista. I love clothes and I, I'm going to say it on here. It makes me uncomfortable to admit, but up until now have been a big lover of fast fashion places where you can buy a million things for $5. And then, you know, you wear it once or twice and then you can throw it away. And I just could not stop thinking about this. So I start talking about it to people and like, you know, like, do I've been asking people, like, do you know, this is an issue? And like 99% of the people that I've talked to have been like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never heard about this. And so it's led me to the space of like, like I introduced myself, like I am a doer, like I definitely get things done, mm-hmm. but this is the first time in my life that I have been really drawn to like a global issue like this. I've just, I, you know, I've just been sort of like sitting on it and thinking about it the last like couple of weeks on like, it's made me think about myself as a person and a business owner. And like, how do I help this cause? And how does this tie into the rest of my life? What I hear you say is kind of two commas, right? So you 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 spent this year and a half identifying as the wedding planner and the soon to be bride, right? And then mm-hmm. you have your wedding, and I know you had a wonderful honeymoon as well. You come back, and the Sarah that I know is like, okay, what's the next thing that I've got to start mm-hmm. putting myself into? You were sitting on a comma post wedding. And now that identity is kind of completed. I am the bride. Now the wedding is done. You feel something that is like, uh, I need something to do. You correct me where I misstate this. And then you go out and you find this cause. And now this, this is a new comma. Cause now this has awakened you to something that has caught your attention. I'm, I'm curious what prompted the, the rabbit hole that you described earlier when you went out searching and then you came across this cause, like what, what's the bridge between post wedding. And now I'm kind of like, have this feeling of that's all done now to then leaping over to this, which has now really become very important to you. What's the bridge there? That's a good question. I think like the bridge was a, like the the space was there for me to, have time to eat, you know, because like this just sort of like popped up randomly. Like I wasn't really mm-hmm. expecting to like stumble across this, but I do think this is one of those things that normally I would like see and be alarmed by, but then like, you know, I don't have the time to spend hours researching some random thing usually, or I, I wouldn't feel like I did. And now I'm in this space where I did have the time. So I did go down it and it really made me take a step back and evaluate like all the things in my life you know like Mm. i'm looking at like a looking at myself for like consumption purposes like where else am i not really thinking about anything else when i'm like purchasing or throwing Mm. things away or that sort of thing and like how are my businesses in a line with the feelings that are coming up with this for me if that makes Mm. sense it's an intentionality thing that i think that's the bridge is like where in my life have I just been like autopiloting and not really thinking about, you know, the consequences of every action that I make and where am I actually being intentional about like these things can happen from this and these things, these people can be affected besides myself. It's interesting. I, first of all, I can see this really caught your attention. I mean, this sounds like your life brought you to now another place that has you questioning and curious, right? So I want to acknowledge that for you, with you, I should say. And and I'm personally just really, really curious, like, ooh, what brought you here? But like, let's set that aside for a second. Maybe it'll come up. Maybe it won't come up. So it really doesn't mm-hmm. even, perhaps it doesn't matter what brought you here or how you got here. You're here. Now mm-hmm. what? So question two is, 
what is this creating for you? I guess maybe let's finish question one. What feels like you're sitting on a comma? You, you've shared a lot of things with us about this, but I'm really curious, like what feels like you're sitting on a comma with this issue? It feels like I'm sitting on a comma because it feels like once you know something, you can't unknow it. It feels like this big deal to me. And it feels like whatever like the next steps are with all of this are going to be pivotal for me as far as like not only like what I'm going to do actively about this, but also for making decisions within my businesses and making decisions within my personal life. It's interesting when I was thinking about talking about this, I think, I, you know, I've always known that you're Paul Riley off the comma. And I was thinking like, well, I don't know if this is really sitting on a comma because it's not, I'm not sitting on a comma in the sense that I'm like, I don't know what to do next. I'm sitting on a comma in the sense that like the intentionality of my life is actively changing from this. And that, that part feels scary i'm hearing you describe I, i'm hearing you describe not so much a sense of being stuck which is what's beautiful about all this right like it, it means whatever it means to each of us right but not so much a sense of feeling stuck but a sense of transition and not knowing what's next but feeling like you there's something you need or maybe more importantly want to do about it yeah i i was talking about this with, with my husband it still feels very strange to say that but <laughs> I, I was talking about this with my husband um when i found out about it and i had said <laughs> i had said well you know i need a new project and he said well you don't so let's start there <laughs> 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 and I said, like, you know, I don't feel like I've ever gotten involved with something that's like an issue that's bigger than myself. And then he stopped me again. And he said, well, you did open a gay gym. So also that. And I was like, yeah, I did. And I think that's the thing, too, is it got me thinking about like purpose. And I think like. Even if you do open a business that's like bigger than you, right? Like for a cause that, you know, that you support and you want to help this group of people, there is some point for me anyways, I can't speak for everyone, but there, there has been a point where like, you just get in the thick of the shit and you're like the day to day and the, this and whatever crisis is coming up that you sort of forget the purpose part. Mm -hmm. And I think that too is also like kind of comma ish for me right now is like my businesses are functioning. There's nothing wrong with them, but I think like I had gotten to this point where like I've been not like not putting out fires, but I mean, you know, one of my businesses is still a baby. It's not even six months old. Mm -hmm. The gym's not even six months old. So it's like that has felt like along with the wedding, like constantly putting out fires, constantly like, uh, what's the next crisis that's going to happen? And so this has really brought me back to like, oh yeah, like most of the stuff that I'm doing does have this like greater purpose of I want to help marginalized groups and I want to help people like be the ally for people who don't have that voice, who don't have, you know, who don't, who are like, who need somebody to advocate and to be there to to help them, really. Well, let's acknowledge two other things that you haven't really vocalized, but it seems like might also be at play here, right? Like you just got married. And although you and Tyler have been together for quite some time, it's a new level of commitment. And it's also a new identity for you in terms of mm -hmm. the, the next step in that relationship. And you just spent two weeks on the other side of the world in another culture in another land outside of your bubble. And, and so I could even say that if you look at the work you've done locally as an ally, that's local. And now what I'm hearing you say is now I got something global that's caught my attention. So it's transitioned into thinking bigger is what it looks like to me. What do you think? I, I was in Bali for almost two weeks. That was where we went for our honeymoon. And this was my, like you said, this was my, mine and my husband's first international trip. And it was beautiful. The trip was amazing. But there was this element being there of like the people there are pretty poor. So there was this element of like, you know, there's these like beautiful villas and like all these like honeymoon things. But 
we didn't stay in a resort. We stayed in an Airbnb. So we were like in, in with the locals, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was like just eye opening for me because there was this moment we were in a taxi and the taxi driver had said, we had asked him like, have you traveled or something like that? And he said like, well, you know, the Indonesian rupiah is very weak so if you're from indonesia you know like you guys reap the benefits because you come here from america and your dollar is really strong so you can get a lot more for a lot less and it's the opposite for us which seems obvious but i was like dang i didn't really i didn't really think about that you know mm -hmm. like i didn't really think about that you know like all sort of like the timing of everything really was right because i i did come back and i have felt this you said identity like your identity is changing. And I really have felt that a lot lately. It's like identity is, is the word that's coming up for me a lot. So what is this comma creating for you? You kind of described broadly for us of, about where you've landed and what it's got you thinking about what, what is this creating for you? Well, I think it's creating hopefully because, you know, I haven't talked about this, but I, I have the ideas for like what I'm going to do through my businesses, like for this, specific cause that I found. So it's creating that. I've talked to the salon about this. They're all, everybody at the salon is very familiar now with, <laughs> with this issue. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about creating like a monthly clothes swap. So people can come, you bring your clothes, you take a bag of clothes. So then you know that like your donations are like actually going somewhere and being donated to someone who's going to wear them. Mm. And, you know, we'll be able to raise money for the organizations that help this cause. But you know, it's one of those things that sort of snowballs. I'm like, oh, and then we can get other local businesses involved. And oh, you know, like on a greater scale, I started thinking like, maybe we have a storefront someday and it can be like a nonprofit for this. And I think it's just like, it's creating possibility. It's really mm -hmm. what it feels like to me. Yeah, it's just creating possibility for like so many things and that feels really exciting it, it's interesting it's an interesting juxtaposition because it's it's i feel very self-reflective and very like nervous about all this because of like the identity things that are wound in it but i think like on the other side of that the possibility <clears throat> that's within that is really really exciting for me Let's unpack that a little bit more too, because because of some of the reflections, I think I kind of pulled us away from what your earlier point was. Your earlier point was you did this research and then you discovered, oh my gosh, these are the this is the the outcomes, the results of some of my own habits. You said I'm a fashionista. I love fast fashion. So it sounds like it caught your attention. You yourself said, Oh my gosh, like this has been my identity and now I see what's happening as a result of it. So I'm, I'm also hearing you say like, I have personally challenged my own way of being when it comes to apparel, I've challenged my own habits. Now I'm also living into that by sharing it with others and encouraging other people to think about their habits. Is that a fair way of reflecting back some of what you said? A hundred percent. And I think the interesting thing because for the longest, I'm trying to remember how, I mean, like, I don't know when like this habit of buying clothes developed, but like, it's a thing. I mean, like my spare bedroom is my closet, like the whole bedroom. <laughs> mm. So I have had this like in my head, like, oh, I can't like, like if I'm going to a thing, like, well, I can't wear this. Some people have already seen me in that. Like there's a picture of me in that on the internet or, you know, whatever. Like, I think I'm Beyonce or something. Like I can't be <laughs> seen in the same <laughs> clothes twice. And what's interesting is, so since I discovered this, you know, like my challenge to myself was like, okay, I'm not going to buy anything that is new. So I can still shop secondhand, but I'm not gonna buy anything that's new for a year. So I've been sort of exploring my closet in the last couple of weeks. And that's been like the joke at work too, is I get to the salon. I'm like, have you ever seen this outfit before? And everyone's been like, no, <laughs> I haven't. And it's all stuff. And that I think is like the testament to the point of the thing is like, it's all fucking stuff in my closet. It's not new. It's been in there. It's all shit that I'm not wearing, but yet I'm consuming and consuming more mm. like constantly in my head. Like I need more, I need a new thing. 
And so I think that has led me to the thought of like, what's enough, you know, and that has like bridged over to the rest of my life of, you know, like, this isn't just about clothes. I mean, like, you know, the cause is important, but like the mindset is not just about clothes. We're like living in this space of like, it's never enough. Like there's constantly commercials, constantly ads. There's an ad on anything on your phone. It's constantly being jammed down your throat. Like you need a new thing. You need a new appliance. You need new clothes. You need new, 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 new. What? When is it enough? Like we're all just like burying ourselves in stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it's fascinating too, right? To interject some of my own observations from my own life, right? Like houses built before the 1950s, right? Because in this when kind of consumer America really started is after World War II. And we can go down all kinds of pathways with that. But let's leave that one there, there alone. <laughs> um, everybody's like, oh, the closets in this house are too small. It's like, why do you think they only had one little broom size closet, right? They they owned <laughs> six, seven, eight pieces of clothing and they just wore those over and over again. Nobody cared about what you were wearing as long as you were wearing something, right? Like, yeah, like it's fascinating yeah. to think yeah, we, we look now when we buy houses like, oh, that's not enough closets. Like you said, I had to like go into a whole bedroom and yet that closet used to be enough. Yeah. yeah. And like if your clothes got a tear, you, you repaired it. Yeah. You stitched it back together. You said so, something really important that I want to kind of, you said, and it's never just about the clothes, is it? It's really like all those piles that you described when you saw the piles of clothing, you know, that's been disposed of. It's like, that's all of our unfulfilled needs and expectations, right? Piles of uh, American consumption. A hundred percent. And I mean, like the statistics on it are staggering, you know, so anybody listening to this, like just Google textile crisis in Ghana and you like the the fact that textile waste is the number two only second to oil cause of pollution in the world was just alarming well and and let's also add to that majority of those clothes are oil because they're synthetic right. fabrics right so they're they're plastic clothes so it's oil waste and oil product waste yes and it it, yeah and it's like perpetuating and it's it's like preventing them from actually being recycled and and i mean like when i say the rabbit hole the rabbit hole is deep but yeah i mean it just and and i think that's like that's the comma and that's the transition is me taking a step back and being like i'm the problem Mm. i'm part of the problem not only am i like not helping a solution my actions have perpetuated this problem. The The foundation that I found that is like the most prominent for helping this cause is the OR Foundation, which they are, I sent you the website. I don't know the exact it, link, but it, it'll be in the, yeah. It'll be in the show notes, yeah. So they're doing a, a lot of great work. You know, they're like helping to provide education for people in Ghana. They're helping to try to come up with solutions to start recycling what is right now unrecyclable clothing because there's there's all these issues that stem off of this but they also have a ton of really great information on the issue as well so they've got a lot of lengthy articles but (laughs) they are really helpful and i'm like you know they because when i first started talking about this people would ask questions and then i'd be like Oh, I don't know. And so I've read through a lot of their articles and now I feel like pretty well versed to like answer Mm. questions when they come up. But yeah, this seems to be from what I found, I'm sure there are more that I don't know about yet. Like I said, this is pretty new for me, but this seems to be like the most prominent organization that's involved with this. You said something else that was really powerful and you said, I'm the problem. And so it sounds like this has brought you to a place of a lot of learning. So that's our third question. You know, what have you learned about yourself as a result of sitting on this comma? Well, I think that I have learned that there's a lot of internal work that is going to go along with this. It's not just like, okay, now I'm hosting a clothing swap and everything's fixed because if I'm really going to immerse myself in this a lot of lifestyle things need to change Mm. because i can't be like waving the flag for you know making sure buying secondhand and recycling your clothes if i'm not waving the flag for recycling everything else and if i'm not waving the flag for sustainability in other areas and i mean you know like we're all human and i'm never we're never going to be perfect but i think that there's so many things that 
connect into this. Like I was talking about like the theory or like the question of like, what is enough? I think that's a question that I'm still figuring out. Like what is enough and how do you be, and I think I'm learning like, how do you be content and happy with what you have right now and not striving what is coming up for me when i find myself like scrolling through online shopping or scrolling through i feel like i need another thing what's really going on what are you noticing let's just go right there i noticed that like it's not i don't think it's all i don't think the shopping is like an all negative thing because i think it is like some branch of creativity for me i think my brain is reaching for like a new thing so like i could style this and what can i do with this and so What's coming up for me is like, I need to find other outlets to be creative or to like, like get that serotonin, you know, like get that, like out, like that outlet. Like I was telling you before we started the show, I'm I've like redecorated my balcony and I'm sort of just like seeing where else I can fill that. It sounds like you know, you have learned uh, some things about yourself from this experience. What else? What else would you say you've learned as a result of this discovery and and this this sitting on this comma, which you said is really more transition than it is being stuck? I think that I've learned it is very much possible to a change to change your actions and to I mean really change your identity and and to change your purpose. I think. Mm-hmm. That's something that I've been thinking about a lot because like we said earlier, we went through that coach program together and we created our purpose statements. And I remember when we did it, I was like, I don't know if this is right. And to be honest, I couldn't even tell you what it was. I don't Mm -hmm. even remember it. But like now that I'm starting to like ground into like, okay, this is something that's important to me and thinking about opening the gym and thinking about my salon. And I've really been following that right now because I feel so strongly in this and I feel so strongly about the change that it's starting to create. Don't ask me for my purpose statement next because I don't, (laughs) I don't quite have that, but like, I'm really feeling like what I think you're supposed to feel when you create a purpose statement that resonates with you. Right. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, And it takes us into kind of a moment of exploration here, right? Because we all hear this. This is this is a big topic in mainstream conversation right now because people are starting to realize that they want to feel a sense of purpose, right? So we, we hear that everywhere, um, which I think is just an amazing thing because I think it's so important for all of us. And you said a couple of things. You said, it's okay for your purpose to change. You said, there have been times where I didn't feel like I was necessarily in alignment with my purpose. And, and I think you're also demonstrating that it's kind of like a yes and proposition, right? There's times where maybe you don't know your purpose. And I might even say that there's times when you don't necessarily feel like you're aligned with your purpose, yet you, your purpose is your purpose. Whether you know it, whether you can say it or not, I mean, if you really look back over your life and your life's work, you've always been guided by a purpose you just maybe didn't see it sometimes or maybe didn't feel it sometimes i don't know i'm I, i'm kind of yeah. self-referencing there too because it's like the times when i felt like oh my god i'm so out of alignment with my purpose i was still going according to my compass it just didn't i didn't see it right sometimes you walk in the dark yeah it's kind of like it makes me think about something you know like like discipline is like doing still doing the thing, even when you're not feeling like hyped about it. Mm. I think it's sort of the same with your purpose, right? Like there's definitely days, months, years where I felt like I've like drug myself through whatever I'm doing. And then there's times like now where I'm feeling like really connected to it and like really feeling that like invisible pull forward, Yeah, which is exciting. I feel like we're always chasing that. Right. But like knowing that, all things are temporary. So there will come another time where like, it's not like that. And remembering this for those times. But let's stay there because that's really, I believe that's what brought you here is you, this was the thing that you were planning. You were kind of hinting at for me. And you just said like, it feels good to feel this alignment with my purpose. So talk more about what that's like for you. This is, this is kind of a new feeling. And you said, I feel like that pull. So that's the big thing right now, right? That's what you're learning and seeing is 
this feels right. Yeah, I don't know. It feels like it definitely feels like a like an excitement, but it's like different from just like excitement because something's new. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because like all things have that for me, like brand new. I like I like new things as we talk mm-hmm. about. But but this feels different. Yeah, because it feels full of possibility. So yeah, to have something that like connects to my purpose, that feels full of possibility. That's making me reevaluate myself and relearn and mm-hmm. um, and even to be able to say, like, I've been doing all these things and perpetuating a problem. I don't feel good about that, but it feels good to be able to say, like, I'm relearning and I'm re I'm rerouting. Well, there, it seems like there's something there and I don't want I don't want to plan anything. I want to like go a little bit deeper. You said it doesn't feel good to recognize this thing about myself. There's something that feels better or different and being able to say it out loud, confess, that's my word, not yours. And, and, and what? Well, it feels good to be like, okay, well, you know, I could have just, I could have learned this information and said like, okay, well, I'm going to keep doing the same thing that I've been doing. Mm. But it feels good to be like, I learned this information and I'm doing something with it and I'm changing who I am and my habits and sharing that information with others. You know, other people can do with it what they will. I can't force people to boycott Fashion Nova, but knowing that I am not going to do that anymore feels good and it feels right to me. When you say feels good, what do you mean by that? It feels like even though if you boycott a corporation or you don't support a corporation, like I'm not going to shut them down. But it feels like, you know, I've taken a stand for myself We talked about this earlier, like the impact I have was, you know, I don't know what that is or what it could be, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out. You said I've taken a stand for myself and you started the conversation also by alluding to the fact that you're also going to be taking a stand for others. So our next question is what has changed for you or what will change for you as a result of this? As far as like me as a consumer, that's definitely changing and that's going to be interesting but like feels exciting to be able to see what i could do creatively with secondhand shopping and with like changing my habits around that and trying to in my own way change the stigma of like you can wear things more than once and people can see you in the same clothes and it's fine Mm -hmm. you know it's great in fact so that's definitely changed i think my involvement with like my team at the salon has changed a little bit because it's been cool to see some of the stylists also get excited about this so having a thing that's just like it's very different from like opening a business and garnering a team i think because like this is like forming a team and we all none of us it's not like i'm making money and giving you a portion of the money like we're not making any money from this Mm -hmm. there's no like there's no that's not guiding the thing this is just a thing that we formed a team around that like we're just trying to do good in the world so that feels that feels different to me as well and like i said earlier i think it will change how i look at a lot of things as far as like sustainability and like carbon footprint goes personally and professionally you you put this into the team you've you've planted the seed you've shared this thought you've got the team taking a stand so you've got this this drive this clothing drive and and some ideas there what else what else do you think will change in terms of your your own personal habits? You just said you're starting to question all of your habits and your consumption habits. Like what else, I guess, is what I want to know. Like what else do you think is going to change? When I open the salon, there's a program called Green Circle and they basically take like all of your salon waste, you put it in separate containers and they take it to recycle it for you, which I looked into. It's like, you know, uh, that is like one of those things. I'm like, I looked into it. It was expensive. I never did it again. Like, I'm the problem. So this is something that I do want to get going at the salon. I think it's, I think it's important. And I think it's also important for me to be a lot more vocal, you know, with the team and with the clientele in the salons about, cause like there's a lot of times I take the trash out and I'm like, there's recyclable stuff in the trash. You know, mm-hmm. I need to do some more enrollment as far as that goes. And, you know, same thing at home, being sure that that is happening And to that point, also, like, beyond the clothes, like, I think there's so many things that it's, like, easy to throw away if you don't want it anymore or, you know, whatever. Like, it's like, I just want this out of my house. I don't care what happens. So I think utilizing, like, whether it's, like, OfferUp or Instagram or, like, whatever platform to, like, either sell things or give things away to, Mm -hmm. like, somebody that's going to use it. So that, again, 
I'm not perpetuating this problem of waste. That's just like beyond everyday, you know, trash or whatever, just like thing, household things and like either making them last or giving them a new home and like giving them a second life. Well, I'm also hearing like what seems to be coming up from this is this concept of I've been doing things the easy way. And now I'm rethinking what doing things that are a little bit harder might actually mean or less resistance yes. to the harder parts. It's, it's funny that you say that too, because I was talking about this with someone recently and she, what did she say? She said, I'm a slut for convenience. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> that's so true it's so it's so true even thinking about because like i was like i'm not buying new clothes for a year and i said that and then we're planning a salon photo shoot and it's you know specific like we're, we're all wearing a specific color and i was like i'm gonna have to thrift this like how am i gonna find <laughs> you know like but notice notice something there like, this is really fascinating, right? Like, I said, I'm not going to buy anything new for a year. And now we're doing this photo shoot. Now, ah, I may not be able to do that because we're all going to be wearing a specific color. And do I have that specific color? What's the one thing you didn't question? Do we have to know. do the Do we have to do the <laughs> photo shoot this way? <laughs> That's like, true. Isn't that That's interesting, true. right? Like, yeah. the circumstances come up and how quickly we say, oh, well, I guess I have to give up my thing because... Now I have to comply with the thing over there. We didn't question the thing over there. Right. The not buying well, and, clothes. Right? And also like the assumption that it will be hard to thrift that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know when, when is even the last time I went in a thrift store prior to this last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you. So like, I'm making this assumption that I'm not gonna be able to find anything hot pink in a thrift store. But like, is that true? Yeah. Probably not. So all it, it brings up all the things, right? Like mm -hmm. questioning everything. Yeah, absolutely. Sarah, what does getting off the comma look like for you? I think getting off the comma for this one is going to be sticking to all these like new habits and things that I'm taking on, you know, getting, getting our Saturday swaps up off the ground and running. And like I said, like holding the people around me accountable, you know, that are like saying that they want to be involved with this and be a part of it and and holding yourself accountable too is what i'm hearing you say yes sarah what would you acknowledge yourself for right now uh honestly i will acknowledge myself for talking about this on the podcast because i was like i said i, I was nervous i was like oh, i'll just talk about when i opened the salon or something <laughs> um so yeah i'll acknowledge myself for bringing a topic that is very new and i you know i didn't know where this was gonna go so yeah. um Thank you for giving me this space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's that's that's the cool thing about these conversations, right? Is some people will come and they'll tell the story retrospectively, you know, this is a time when and this is what happened, this is what I learned from it. Sometimes people are like, I'm sitting on this comma right now. And and that's what you're demonstrating, right? It's like uh, this isn't even entirely clear to me. I just know that this thing has come up. This is some of what it's creating for me and I have a vision for where I want to go with this. And all of the kind of discovering is still unfolding as it happens. But you, yeah. you, you definitely like put it out there and, and you, you set an intention too, right? And so putting the story out there helps support that intention. Totally. Yeah, totally. Where can people find you if they want to learn more about you and what you're doing? You can find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Sarah Serbs. And then Personalized Fitness, we are a personal training and membership gym. And we opened with a purpose to create a safe space primarily for the LGBTQ plus community and allies of the community as well. We are hopefully introducing group training within this month. So, and we will be, uh, if you're in, Sac I don't know if this will air in time, but if you're in Sacramento, we'll be at Pride next weekend. Awesome. Yeah. The goal is this goes out on Wednesday before Pride. So perfect. should air in time. Cool. And then also with your permission, Sarah, you, and this will be in the show notes, you wanted to acknowledge the Orr Foundation, which you did already talk a little bit about, and they are working at the intersection of environmental justice, education, and fashion development. Their mission is to identify and manifest alternatives to the dominant model of fashion, alternatives that bring forth ecological prosperity as opposed to destruction and that inspire citizens to form a relationship with fashion that extends beyond their role as a consumer. And Thank it's interesting because that is what, <laughs> that is what I heard you saying. Like, that's exactly what this did for you is it started you down a path of 
of really questioning all the things, right? Yeah, that's it. That really is it. That's awesome. Sarah, thank you. I really have, as always, just enjoy talking with you. And and sometimes we're just shooting the shit. And sometimes we're talking about really substantive stuff. And I want to acknowledge you for for coming on here and putting this out there and being okay with telling a story about sitting on a comma. Thanks so much for having me, Paul. I'm I'm honored. Honored to be to be your friend and to be here on the on the podcast. That goes both ways, my friend. Igualmente, mi amiga. Awesome. All right. Well, that was powerful work from a powerful human. I invite you to think about what you learned from this conversation, and I encourage you to write it down. I can't tell you how magical it can be to set aside your expectations and let the thoughts flow out of your head and onto paper. Freestyle journaling has been a powerful practice in my life. You never know what you might discover about yourself. Thank you for listening to this episode of Off The Comma. Follow me on social media at Off The Comma. And be sure to like this episode and follow the podcast. If you were moved by today's conversation, pass it along to someone you care about. As always, keep noticing. We'll see you next time.